Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa afdulu salatu wa tamu taslim Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Wa radiyallahu ta'ala ana sadi tabi'een Wa ulama al-amaleen wa a'imatu al-arabat al-mujtahideen Wa magalidihim ila yawmiddeen amma ba'd Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh just give me a few seconds. I'm trying to share this video. Everybody who's watching, please come on and share the video, inshallah. Let the believers know that we are here. Alhamdulillah, that's all of our pages. Alhamdulillah. So, Alhamdulillah, last week we said we were going to move right into tonight's subject. Last week we were talking about one aspect of the Shehu's methodology with regards to transmitting knowledge. And we summarized basically by saying each one teach one, and we really kind of contrasted how the Shehu groomed his students and his community as opposed to what we are seeing nowadays where we have this is actually a very un-Islamic way of thinking uh, as far as uh, transmitting knowledge. Like you have to, for example, go away somewhere for X amount of years before before you're uh, qualified to come back and teach. And this was not the methodology of the Shehu, nor was it the methodology of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, بَلِّغُ أَنِّي وَلَوْ Relate for me even if it is one verse. And so, and we talked a lot about that and we kind of kept talking about or mentioning uh, the evil scholars. So we decided that being that we mentioned that so much last week, that it's only natural that we go into what the Sheikh has to say about evil scholars. The, the Shehu, he talks about evil scholars in many of his books. He talks about the evil scholars in Musa and Muhammad, the book of important points. He talks about it in many of his books. We are talking or coming from this book, Wathiku uh, Tulikwan, the mandate of the brothers. And so we're going to be coming from that book. But like we said, the Sheikh, he discussed is this, this topic in many of his books. And it was very relevant it's always been very relevant to his time and to every time. And I think we underestimate the impact and the danger inherent in the evil scholar. Like a lot of us are very cavalier. We're very nonchalant about who we give access to our intellect and our hearts. We're very nonchalant about that. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, Michael, Mikael, alhamdulillah. Always a pleasure, alhamdulillah. I mean, if you actually think about it, there are people that we wouldn't expose our bodies to. In other words, for medical treatment. We wouldn't let someone touch us if we felt that they weren't qualified. 
if they, you know, say, you know, I read a couple of books. Let me do this major medical procedure on you. We'd be like, get out of my face. We don't even want him in the room. But when it comes to our dean, we allow anyone in the room or in our hearts. And as you're going to see, see, let me back up. I wrote a book called The Musela Lesson. And I could have easily chosen another catchy title for the book. I could have talked about, I could have mentioned something about false prophets or modern false prophets or signs of false prophets or something like that, right? But I didn't do it. I didn't, I didn't call it that. I could have gave it another name, calling out certain groups that claim to be Muslims, but you know, follow people who claim to be prophets after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, you know, because, you know, controversy sells. So my book sell, sales would have been higher if I would have put, you know, one of those type of, uh, you know, controversial titles for the, uh, as a title of the book. But I did not want to do that. And the reason why I didn't want to do that, because I've always been taught that we need to teach principles. Teach the principles, the foundation. And so when you apply the principles to any individual, you know, if, if the person has, understands and comprehends and knows how to apply the principles, you don't have to call out people's name. You don't have to do it. So, yeah, controversy sells, but sells, but I want to awaken people to the base these basic principles in Islam. So the reason why I mention that is that I wrote a book called The Musalama Lessons. And as I'm pretty sure a lot of you know, Musalama was the first or one of the first false prophets to emerge in, in Al-Islam. And he emerged declaring himself to be a prophet during the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is extremely important because we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Uswatun Hasana. He's the uh, best pattern. And so everything that happened to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, everything that he encountered, experienced, how he dealt with the different people that he interacted with, whether they be Sahaba, you know, companions and supporters or opposition and enemies, all of these things provide archetypes and lessons for us to benefit from. So we can say, okay, hmm, this person, who was he? What was he? Okay, he represents this. And so we have a blueprint and a pattern on how to deal with that type of person whenever they emerge, anytime after the Prophet. So I called I, I was I was more concerned with teaching people the principle and showing people the pattern of false prophets and what they do and how they emerge, et cetera. I was more important, I was more concerned with that. And the reason why I mentioned that because in the whole story of Musalama emerges a person named Rajal. Rajal was from the uh, Bani Hanifa, the same tribe that Musalama was from. And he was considered a scholar. Why was he considered a scholar? Because he stayed back in Medina learning from the Prophet وسلم, and learning Islam directly from the Prophet. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh bilal. Alhamdulillah. So you would think that this person, he learned directly from the Prophet, وسلم, learned Quran. And when he finished up learning his basics, the Prophet Sallallahu sent him back to Bani Hanifa and he uh, gave him the job of warning and advising people against Musalama the liar. And so this person went back to Bani Hanifa and he actually said, you know me, I'm, I'm paraphrasing in my own words. He said, you know me, I'm the Sheikh. I learned just directly from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And he told me 
that Musalama is on the truth and we all need to follow him. He actually did that. And so I mentioned him because this is an example of the danger of an evil scholar. Because you trust the evil scholar because he spent all that time learning. He dedicated his life. You know, he understands things on a way deeper level than, than the average common person. He knows the terminology. He, he, knows, he knows all of these things. He knows the principles, but he acts contrary to them. And a lot of us, especially if we don't know the basics, we won't even know that he's acting or teaching contrary to these basic principles that he learned. And so because Rajal went back to Bani Hanifa and lied on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, saying that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Musalam was cool, follow him. More people started following Musalam because of Rajal than Musalam himself. More people follow Musalama, the liar, because of Rajal than Musalama himself. In other words, it was because of this evil scholar, Rajal, that Musalama got so many followers, even more so than Musalama himself. And that's the danger of the evil scholar. That's the danger of the evil scholar. The, the evil scholar leads more people astray because of his scholarship. He knows how to use words you know he, he can use words and mean one way by by these words and you think he means something else and, and, and in order to be able to hustle people you have to know to hustle like in other words in order to, to trick people into believing you're a doctor you have to know medical terminology you have to know enough about medicine to trick people into thinking that you actually know this thing you can't just have absolutely no knowledge of medicine and then walk into a hospital and trick, trick people into thinking that you're a doctor. You got to look the part, you got to dress the part, you got to use certain terminology. You have to do all of these things. So in order for an evil scholar to be an evil scholar, he has to have some level of scholarship. So we have during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam an example of an evil scholar. Here it is, you have the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam living breathing during that time, but yet this one evil scholar, Rajal, was able to trick so many people and get them to follow a false prophet. And fast forward up to the time of the author, Sheikh Uthman Denfodio, to Rama Dahulahu bi rahmati ameen, may Allah envelop him in his mercy, ameen. Like all time periods, you had evil scholars during his time period. And the evil scholars were basically co-signing everything that the evil or the corrupt leaders did. And the corrupt leaders, for those of you who don't know the history, they were Muslims. We're talking about West Africa. In most of West Africa, by the 15th century, Islam was well established there. So we're talking about the 18th century, the 1700s, right? During the Shehu's time. All, most of these people claim to be Muslims. And including the rulers, but they, they, but you had some of these rulers practicing what a lot of us nowadays would call voodoo or black magic, or the body body spirit code. They, you know, they worship a lot during the day, and and and, and worshiping trees and rocks and sacrificing animals to other than Allah at night. And certain scholars would justify this, and so the sheikh. He didn't, he couldn't be quiet about it. He had to speak about it. And so, Bismillah, we're going to get into it. Qalamu Allah Rahimullah. Ya ikhwani fajtahidu fidinikum wala wala tafsiduha. Qala ta'ala ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ati'u allaha wa ati'u rasoola wala tubtilu a'amalukum. Ya ikhwani fajahidu nafsa. ولا تتبئوا فتحلي كحكم قال تعالى ولا تتبع ولا تتبع الهوى فيدلك عن سبيل الله يا يا إخواني عليكم بالوعظ قال تعالى وذكر فإن الذكر تنفع المؤمنين وفي الحديث إذا ظهر الفتنة فتنة وسكت ال عالم فعليه لعنة الله 
The Sheikh said, O my brothers, make strenuous effort regarding your deen and do not corrupt it. Make strenuous effort regarding your deen and do not corrupt it. Uh, the Most High says, O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the messenger and do not render your actions worthless. And this is Surah Muhammad, Surah 47, verse number 33. O you who believe, <coughs> obey Allah and obey the messenger and do not render your actions worthless. In other words, you can nullify your actions by corrupting your deen. He's going to clarify. O my brothers, struggle hard against the self. And do not allow it other and do not follow it. In other words, do not follow your nafs. Otherwise, you you will be destroyed. He the most high says, and do not follow your hawa, your desires, as it will lead you astray from, from the way of Allah. And this is Surah Sad. This is Surah number 38, verse number 26. He, the Sheikh is laying a foundation. And Again, with all of the right acting scholars, you know, they don't just, you know, just say what they say. You know, they say what they say, but they tell you what they're saying is based upon. Uh, just to continue, because this section is a little bit lengthy. It's a small book, but in, in relative to the size of the book, this, this section is lengthy. He says, oh, my brothers, you must adhere to this admonition. He, the most high, says... And remind, for indeed the reminder benefits the believers. This is a well-known verse, Surah Dariyat. This is uh, Surah number 51, verse number 55. In the Hadith, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, when, fit, when fitten, when tribulations appear and the learned one remains silent, the curse of Allah is upon him. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? He said, when fitten appears, when tribulations appear, and the island remains silent, the curse of Allah is on that scholar, the island. And this hadith uh, was mentioned by Imam Dhahabi in his book, Mizan al-Itidal. The Shaykh continues, Wala taqtumu ilman Qala ta'ala inna alladhina yaktumuna ma anjalna min albayyanati wal huda min ba'di ma bayyanahu linnasi fil kitabi ula baynahu linnasi fil kitabi ulaika yal'anahum allahu wa yal'amu wa yal'anuhum al-a'inu he says, and do not conceal the knowledge. Don't conceal the knowledge. He, the Most High, says, those who conceal the clear signs we have sent down and the guidance after we have made it clear for the people in the book, on them be the curse of Allah and the curse of those entitled to curse. This is Surah Baqarah, Surah uh, uh, number 2, verse number 159. Those entitled to uh, uh, those entitled to curse Allah is referring to the angels, the believers, and everything else, including animals, and, and whenever they make dua that they be cursed. Yes, because a lot of times we have this concept of inanimate objects, and we don't recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives these things life forms. And we know from various other hadith that, for example, the seeker of knowledge, the one who goes after knowledge, when he's in the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything is making dua for him, even the fish in the sea. So the one who conceals the knowledge on that person is the curse of Allah and those entitled to curse. SubhanAllah. Wa fil hadith, he called sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man katama ilman nafi'an. In the hadith, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever conceals beneficial knowledge, Allah will bridle him with a bridle of fire. And this hadith has been related by Tirmidhi and Al-Hakam. The Shaykh continues, 
يا إخواني لا تجلسوا عند علماء السوء أهل الغفلة أنصار الشيطان هم خليفة إبليس في الفساد وهم الذين يقودون في كل بدعة هرسة متاع الدنيا سبحان الله He said, oh my brothers, do not sit with the evil scholars. Ulema usu. He's going to give you some synonyms. The evil scholars, right? He said, ahlul ghafla, the people of heedlessness. The people who not are in a state of watchfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And saru shaitan. The shaykh is t telling you the reality of, of an evil scholar. The helpers of the shaitan. This is how you have to see an evil scholar. Helpers of the shaitan. Helpers of the shaitan. Helpers of Ansaru shaitan. They, not, they don't mean you any good. And he's going to elaborate on all of these things. They are the deputies of Iblis and corruption. In other words, they do his bidding. In other words, shaitan, Iblis, he has helpers. And the helpers in doing the shaitan's work is they are, are the evil scholars. They are those who boldly engross themselves in every innovation, thirsty after the gratification of this world. Qala ta'ala kul mata'u dunya qalilun wal akhiratun wa akhiratu khayrun lima niktaqa. Alam tara illa qawlihi ta'ala ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu inna kathiran min al ahbari wa al ruhbani la ya'quluna amwal al nasi bil batili. He, the Most High, says, short is the enjoyment of this world. The hereafter is best for those who do right. And this is Surah Nisa, verse number, uh, Surah number 4, verse number 77. Have you not seen the words of the Most High? O you who believe, verily many among the priests and the rabbis devour the wealth of people unjustly and block people from the way of Allah. This verse is extremely important. This is verse Surah uh, number 9, Surah Tawbah, verse number 34. Verily many of the Christian leaders and the Jewish leaders, they block people from the way of Allah. Many people, it doesn't mean all, right? كَثِيرٌ مِنَ الْأَحْبَارِ وَحْرُبَانِ لَيَعْقُلُونَ عَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِنِ They block people from the way of Allah. And and they they devour the wealth of people unjustly. This verse right here is foundational. It's fundamental in understanding the motivation and the reality of the evil scholar in Islam. And you might say, okay, this verse is not talking about Muslims. This verse is talking about the people of the book. So what does that have to do with us? It has everything to do with us. And we should. And, and again. Muslims, we should not be arrogant when we read in the Quran or we read in the Sunnah when Allah or his messenger, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, say something negative about the Christians and Jews. Allah is not in the habit of name calling. The, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not in the name of name calling or making fun of other people. It's not that that's not what it's for. I know a lot of people who are, are not rooted in Islam or people that are against Islam. They try to make it like that. Oh, they. They just name calling. They just trying to bash other people. That's not the purpose. The purpose is to warn us. Because history has a habit of repeating themselves. And the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last of the Ummah, is the last of the nations. So we're going to have a propensity to repeat the mistakes and the good of those who came before us. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تتبعون سنن الذين من قبلكم شبرا بشبرا ذراعا بذراعا حتى لا تقروا في جخر دب تبعتموهم كي لا يا رسول الله يا هو ونصارى قال فمان The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you will definitely follow the, the, the methodologies, the ways, the sunan of those who came before you, step by step, inch by inch, to such an extent if one of them went into uh, the hole of a lizard, you will definitely follow them into it. And then it was said, O Messenger of Allah, are you talking about the Jews and the Christians? And he said, who else? And so, and we mentioned, I think we mentioned this last week as well. The, the other hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that 
what afflicted Benny Israel, who the who are the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians come from Benny Israel, right? Uh, what afflicted them will afflict my ummah. And he used a phrase, na'al bin na'al. The way one sandal uh, 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 is like another sandal. Or one shoe resembles another shoe. And that's it's a beautiful parable he gave. Because think about it. If you look at your two feet, they look different. They like, they like mirror images. Because the big toe is on the inside. So, the, you know, you know the, the, the toe on the right foot is, you know, the right, the, the, the left part of your right foot is longer than the left, the right part of your left foot. But if you match up your feet or two shoes together, they, they, they match up evenly. If you put the soles of your sandals or your shoes together, they line up evenly, even though they, they're different when you look at them. And so even though Bani Israel and the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're di they're di they're, they are different communities. But if you line them up, you will see that they look exactly alike. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what afflicted them will afflict us to such an extent that even if one of them had intercourse with his own mother, somebody from my ummah will do the same thing. So when we read something negative, about Bani Israel, or about the Jews and the Christians. We shouldn't get arrogant and be like, ha ha, look at them. No, we should be scared because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says someone from his nation is going to do the same thing. And I'm going to say there may be a, a reason why we say it in, in every Salat at the end of the Fatiga. Uh, exactly. Dina Sirato Mustaqeen, Sirato Ladina and Amta Alehim, Rayur al Makadubi Alehim, one at all in. Alhamdulillah, the brother was saying there's a reason, and that is the reason that uh, even in Al Fatiha, and a lot of Muslims don't know this, we are asking Allah for something. We are asking Allah to guide us on a straight path, not the path of those who encourage your ghadab, your wrath. And read every commentary. This is not me going on some type of anti-Semitic rant. You know, they, they labeled me anti-Semitic, right? So this is what this is what they do when they uh I forgot what the, the, the military term is. When they mark you, like they, they 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 you have somebody on the ground marking you, right? And then so they mark you so that uh a drone or a jet or something can uh bomb a pr place precisely. So when they when they mix your words up and try to make you look like anti-Semitic or or, some, or whatever or a terrorist or whatever label they put on you, they know that they they're reporting and all of that stuff is it, junk, is garbage. But it don't matter. They just put the label on you just so that later on when somebody wants to attack you, all they have to do is Google it, pull it up. Aha, that's right. He's an anti-Semitic, right? So, so, but uh, what was the point? Ah, yeah, the Fatiha. The ghadab, those who incurred Allah's wrath, are the Jews. You can pick up any commentary on Surah Fatiha, the first chapter of the Quran. Allah is talking about specific people. And then those who have gone astray are the Christians. It's, it's right there in the books of Tafsir. So in the Quran, when, when we pray, we are asking Allah for something. And then we're getting more specific with the prayer, asking Allah not to make us like something. Right? So... This is what we are asking for. But nevertheless, there's going to be a large portion of us that fall into that. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, the two hadith that we just mentioned. And so likewise, if you have scholars among and religious leaders amongst the Jews and the Christians who do what? Devour the wealth of people. Devour or eat the wealth of people. In other words, they're hustling. They're using their, their, their religion as a hustle. And uh, they block people from the way of Allah. They're blocking you from reaching Allah. They're blocking you from ma'rifa. They're blocking you from what the whole reason that you got in the religion in the first place. They're blocking you from reaching God. If you have if you have a group of people from amongst the Christians and Jews who are doing it, then there are definitely going to be people who, who are from amongst the Muslims who do the same thing. The Sheikh continues. 
Qala Muhammad ibn Abdul Abdul Karim ibn Muhammad al maghili al Tilmisani inna kathiran min al ulama al hadhi al umma wa ubadihim yaquluna mu'al nasi bil batil wa yansuduna an sabilillah wa bi sabab ha ulai ulama'i wal ubadi sha'al fasadi fi jam'il fi fi jami'il biladi subhanallah he said uh, the sheikh said muhammad ibn abdul karim ibn muhammad al maghili al tilmisani said this is a very influential scholar you talking about many of our key figures uh in uh is islam like the sheikh and many others uh they re uh, relied a lot on his scholarship subhanallah there's a book called the ajwiba written by askia muhammad tore he was a contemporary of this scholar that we're quoting and he asked him a lot of questions about islam and government and evil scholars and all of these things and these questions and answers were put into a book called the ajwiba and it's readily available in in arabic and even in english right but in anyway the sheikh quotes him a lot especially dealing with this topic he said, uh, Verily, many of the scholars of this ummah and their worshippers devour the wealth of people unjustly and block people from the way of Allah. It is because these it is because of these scholars and worshippers that corruption has filled the land. The Sheikh said, "What be sabab ha ulai ulama wal ubadi sha al fasad fil jami al balad?" That these is because they are the sabab. They are the reasons. You wonder why there's a lot of confusion and fitna in the Muslim Ummah right now. They are the reasons. You don't have to look any further. Them, the scholars and ubad, the 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 quote unquote worshippers. You mean which mean all the worshippers, the underlings of the lot of these. Uh, uh, of a lot of these sheikhs and a lot of these people. The sheikh continues. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa halaka wa halaku ummati alimul fajirun wa abidun jahilun wa qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ana min ghayr al-dajjal aqwafu alaykum min al-dajjal faqalu Mimman ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala ulama usu. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the destruction of my community will come about because of a corrupt scholar and ignorant worshiper. The corrupt scholar and the ignorant worshiper. This hadith has this been related by ad in his sunnah and is also quoted by Imam Ghazali in his ihya. He, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, said, I am not a Dajjal, uh, Dajjal, the Antichrist, the, the imposter of Christ. And I fear someone else for you more than my fear concerning a Dajjal. Then they said, for whom, O Messenger of Allah? He said, the evil scholars. If you understand everything that the Prophet Sallallahu said about the, a Dajjal, you know, this is the, one of the major signs of the hour, the last day. And the Prophet Sallallahu talks so much about the Dajjal and the fitna that he's going to cause and how he's going to be lead people stray, how he's going to come with fire and he's going to come with water. But if you go to the water, it's really going to be fire and the fire is really going to be water. So he, he was He's so deceptive and tricky and he's going to lead so many people straight all of these things and we read surah the kaf on juma surah 18 on yomu juma as a protection from the jail and all of these things that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about at the jail right and here it is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i fear something for you more than i fear at the jail in other words i'm not scared for myself i'm scared for you and and, and i'm worried i'm worried on your behalf of something even more than the jail and they said, who, O Messenger of Allah? And he said, evil scholars. Evil scholars. While Ru'ya and Hudayf ibn Yamani, radiallahu anhu, anhu akadha hasata bayda'a fawa da'aha fi kaffihi thumma qala inna al-deena qadistada'u. 
قد استدع قد استدع مثل هذه الحصاحة ثم أكذا كفا من تراب فجعل فجعل يذره عليه على على الحصاة حتى وراها ثم قال والذي نفسي بيده لا يجي لا يجي أن أقوام يدفنو يدفنون الدين هكذا كما دف 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 دفنت هذه الحساة ومن أبيني علامتي أنهم لا يصلحون ولا المستعود He said, it was related on authority of Hudayfa ibn Yamani radiallahu ta'ala anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, that he, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, had taken a white stone and placed it in his palm. Then he said, truly the deen has been illuminated like this stone. In other words, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had taken a white rock and put it in his hand and he said, basically, this this dean is clear and bright, just like this white rock you got I have in my hand. Then he took a handful of earth and made it sprinkled over the stone until it covered it, until it completely concealed it. Then he said, I swear by the one who is in control of my soul that there are people coming who will bury and conceal the dean the same way I have just covered this stone. Subhanallah. The dean is clear. And that's the thing about it. That's a sign that you're living and being influenced by evil scholars. Because the deen is simple. It's clear. It's easy to understand. But when you have a lot of evil scholars in the mix, they introduce a whole lot of superfluous, extra, unnecessary, caught before the horse information designed to confuse you. And then he said, I mean, I mean, I mean. And then he said, Alamati annahum la yuslihuna wa la yaturakuna man yuslihu. Subhanallah. He said, one of their more obvious characteristics is that they will not rectify. And they will not leave alone those who wish to rectify. When we translated this, we have parentheses here. I skipped, I skipped the parentheses. I'm going to go back and read it again. One of their more obvious characteristics is that they will not rectify what people have corrupt, corrupted from the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and will not leave alone those who wish to rectify the corruption which has crept into the deen. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is something that you can't neglect. This is something that's extremely important. A lot of times, people who are sincere and serious, and we, a lot of times we think that, uh, okay, let us just practice our Islam and we know there are evil scholars out there. We're not going to attack them. And I'm talking about the, you know, the leaders and the scholars, you know, the right acting scholars. We're not going to attack the evil scholars. We're just going to teach what is right. You know, the, the, when the people see what, what, what is correct and hear what is correct, you know, we're doing our job. We're not going to name call. We're not going to point point the evil scholars out. Don't worry. You ain't got to worry about that. You ain't got to worry about calling them out, calling them out, mentioning, mentioning them by name. They will attack you. If you are doing what is right, the evil scholar will attack you. You don't have to mention their name. You don't have to mention, you don't have to uh, attack them in your books or your speeches or your classes or your cookbars. They will attack you. Again, the Sheikh said, Alamati annahum la yuslihuna wa la yatrukuna man yuslihu. One of their signs, their predominant characteristics, is they're not there to rectify, to fix, to cure, to heal. 
and they will not leave alone. They will not. Uh, they will not leave alone those who are rectifying it. So if you're doing what is right, if you're teaching what is right, if you're a right acting scholar and you're doing what is right, it's only a matter of time before the evil scholars start attacking you. You don't have to worry about attacking them. They will attack you. فَمَثْلُهُمْ كَمَثْلِ سَقْرَةِ فِي النَّحْرِ لَا تَشْرَبَ لا تشرب ولا تترك من يشرب فكل واحد منهم الدر على الناس من ألف شيطان <laughs> Their likeness is the likeness or their similitude or their parable is the likeness of a huge boulder placed in the middle of a river. It does not drink, nor does it allow others to drink. Therefore, each one of them is more harmful to the people than 1,000 devils. So in other words, he's giving you parables, just like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would do. And he's using the same type of parable, the parable of a rock or a stone. He said the evil scholar is like that gigantic big boulder in the middle of a river is in the river what is it doing is it drinking no it's a rock but it's diverting all of the water and it's blocking you from drinking so it does not drink nor does it allow others uh, others to drink and again that's a point that we have to drive home because we think the evil scholars are only hurting themselves you know they're going to be held accountable for their knowledge no 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 they are harmful to you. They are there to block you from the whole reason that the, the whole reason you took shahada, they are there to undermine that. Well, well, they said, well, they said, yeah, subhanAllah. The Sheikh said, and, and this is a, a famous saying in Islam. And it came out of the tongue of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was narrating the story of when Musa, when Musa uh, saw the Bani Israel worshiping the golden calf. Why did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Laysa Qabr uh, Hearing about a thing is not like seeing it. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had already informed Moses that his people were worshiping the golden calf. He already knew about it. But when he came with the tablets and saw it with his own eyes, he dropped it. It was like, subhanAllah. He already knew. It wasn't a surprise, but lace a couple of kayan. Hearing about a thing is not like seeing it. SubhanAllah. You hear about something, then you actually see it. It's like, wow. And so the Sheikh is saying, yes, scholars have written for 1400 years about evil scholars and, you know, what they're doing and their harm and everything. But when you actually witnesses, witness it, it subhanAllah, hearing about a thing is not like seeing it. Ya ikhwan al-Muslimin, inna ulama al-su'i dayya'u min hudud illahi من الصلاة والصيام وسائر الفرائد من هب المال وتعظيم والتقلب في في فتون الحرام والإتام واستهان بكثير من أمر الله والنحي والنحيه ولذلك براز الله بال بالعظائم والإدرار على القبائر كأنهم يريدون يريدون الدنيا وزناتها نوفي إليهم أعمالهم فيها وهم فيها لا يب لا يبخسون أولئك الذين ليس لهم في الآخرة 
آخرات النار وهبت ما صنعوا فيها وباتلوا ما كانوا يعملون The Sheikh said Oh my Muslim brothers verily the evil scholars have ruined part of the boundaries of Allah pertaining to the salat the fast and the rest of the obligations because their of the, of their love of wealth and self aggrandizement they want to be the big shots they, they're doing it for money like in our age we used to say scholars for dollars because of their love of wealth and aggrandizement that's why the sheikh began this section by warning all of us not to follow our nafs and our hawa he continues they have indulged in all kinds of haram and sinful acts they make light of many of the commands of Allah and his prohibitions. All of these things, he's laying down some of their characteristics and their patterns. You gotta, these are things you got to watch for. See, a lot of us, we want to say, brother, is such and such an evil scholar? Don't ask me about no individual person. Listen to these principles that the sheikh is laying down. Are they indulging in all types of haram and sinful acts? He's a scholar. If you know it's a haram and a sinful act, best believe he knows. They make light of many of the commands of Allah and his prohibitions. Another sign and symbol, they make light. You know, it ain't no big deal. It's an extremely big deal. One, one a manifestation of that during our times is that many of the evil scholars they make light of the aqaid, the aqidah, the proper belief with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, they do. It's, it's not a big deal. So what? You know what? So what he's saying Allah has hands? Literally, so what? So what he's saying Allah has eyes? Literally, so what? So what he's saying Allah literally has your face? So what? So what? So what he's making Allah like his create creation, even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Lisa kamithli he shade. There's nothing like it. So what? It's not a big deal. Don't you know there's brothers getting killed in Palestine and Kashmir and China, the weakest danger? Don't, don't you know? Right? So you will see the things that Allah and his messenger and all of the right acting scholars for 14 plus hundred years have made important the foundation of Islam. They make light. It's not a big deal. So what? Uh, this bad understanding, this wrong understanding about Allah, who we worshiping, you know. So what? People have a, 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 a corrupted understanding of that. That's not important. And consequently, they have set themselves up as rivals to Allah because of the calamities and, and harm caused by, by persistence in major sins. They are as, though, they are as and he's quoting the uh, verse, that, uh, verse of the Quran, those who desire the life of, this, of the world and its adornments. We shall pay them for their deeds therein. And this they shall have no diminution. In other words, they, Allah is going to pay him back and he's not going to decrease the payment. These are the ones for whom there is nothing in the hereafter. Vain are the designs they devise. Therein and false are the deeds that they do. And this is from Surah Hud, verse number 11. I mean, Surah number 11, verses number 15 and 16. And this takes me back to the well-known hadith. You know, the three people who come before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, the, the, the scholar, uh, the one who Allah blessed with wealth, and the one who, who blessed to be a warrior. When uh, Just, just uh, uh, be mindful of the time, not to make quote the whole hadith, that uh, Allah is going, Allah, when he brings the scholar, He's going to say, you know, I taught you Islam. I gave you knowledge. I'm paraphrasing the hadith. And uh, what did you do with this blessing, this favor that I gave you? And the person is going to say, oh, I taught, you know, for your sake, oh, Allah, blah, blah, blah. And he also recited too. Yes. Uh, and so, uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say, Kathepta, you're lying. You, the reason that you did it, the reason why you taught all of these things is so that people can say you knowledgeable for Kadapta. 
uh, uh, for Kadkila, and they said it. And, and this, this is extremely important because it goes back to basic Islam. In the action is judged by intentions, right? So the the scholar, the evil scholar, he's going to say out of his mouth to Allah that he taught for his sake. And Allah is going to tell him what his intentions really were. No, you taught so that people can say that you were knowledgeable. Fakad Kila. And they said it. In other words, you got what you wanted. You intended the reason that you did all these things so people can tell you and so that you can hear people say that you're knowledgeable. And they said it. They, they verified it. So in other words, you got your reward. So now drag him by his lying, sending forelock and, drive him, and drag him to the hellfire. Right? So the intention, the purpose of teaching is all wrong. And we want to uh, mention something else before we close out here. Margaret is going to be in in a second here, inshallah. And this is from an, another book of the Shehu called Usulu Wilaya. The Foundations of Friendship or the foundations of protected friendship with Allah. The Sheikh said, Wakulu men da'a halan ma'allahi tumma dahara minhu ahadu kamsati ashya'a fahua kadabun, subhanallah, aw maslubun, wal iya the bilahi, al awl. إرسال الجواره في المعاصي الله ثاني تسنع في طاعة الله الثالث تم في خلق الله الرابع وقيعة أحل الله الخامس عدم احترام المسلمين على الوجه الذي أمر الله به ما يختم يختم له بالإسلام. He said, whoever claims a status with Allah, and there appears from him one of the five things, is either a big liar, or he is one of the abandoned ones. This is extremely important too, because a lot of a lot of us are coming to proper coming to proper Islam, and we recognize that Islam has its roots, has its usul, and it has its furor, and it has its branch, its outer branch, and its inner branch, right? And so we recognize uh, tasawwuf. We recognize what some people say in English, Sufism, or uh, uh, ilmusir, or tasqiyah to nafs. We recognize that this is part of the deen and not an erroneous addition to the deen. And so a lot of us, we're looking for that spiritual connection. And so a lot of us get caught up on that. And we don't know the signs to look for. We trust people. And, that, and that's deep if you think about it. We trust someone with our soul and training our nafs quicker than we'll trust someone that we got to give a lot of money to. Like we buy a car from someone Oh, let me see the car facts. Or let me see the, I need to see if there's any accidents in it. Let me take it to get, let me get it test driving first. But but we won't test drive the shape, but we'll test drive the car. And so just like, you know, like when you test driving the car, you know, you don't get in there, you blast the radio. If the radio don't work, so what? It don't cost a lot to fix. You want to listen from listen for noises coming from the engine, the transmission and stuff like that, right? And so it's the same way when you're trying to learn from a sheikh. So the sheikh said, again, whoever claims a status and there appears from him one of the f following five things, he is either a kathab and subhanAllah. He didn't say kathab. He didn't say liar. He used the exaggerated form of liar. Big liar. Kathab. Like when we say musalama, we don't say musalama kathab. We don't say, we say Muselma al kadhab the big liar, because the lie that Muselma came with was so big and outrageous that you're just not just a regular, order, ordinary, everyday liar. You're a big liar. And this is what the sheikh is saying about these fake sheikhs here. 
Whoever he's saying that there is either a big lie. He didn't say is a, either a kadab. He said no, al kadab, the same exact wording that's used for Musalim or the false prophet. He is either a big liar or is one of the ones who are abandoned. He said we seek refuge with Allah. The first is uh, involving his limbs or his actions in the disobedience of Allah. In other words, how are you going to be a wali of Allah and you just doing open disobedience? Like that, that don't make sense. It contradicts the foundations of Islam. And this is something that we have to be, we have to understand this from the gate. Because if you already caught up, the sheikh is going to give you an excuse behind that. See, brother, the reason why I'm doing this openly haram, uh, this openly haram action that, that everybody and their mother know is haram is because I'm humbling myself. I'm humbling myself and I'm embarrassing myself in order to be embarrassed in front of you in order to uh, kill, destroy our nuts. We didn't pray yet. You can call it done if you want. Inshallah. We're about to close out. So, uh, so, and there is room for that in Islam, but not with the openly haram. Listen, I'm eating, the, I'm eating these chitlins right here because every Muslim knows that chitlins is haram. And I'm eating it in front of y'all because I'm trying to embarrass myself in front of y'all as a way to humble myself. No, 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 it don't work like that, Shake. Not with no chitlins. I'm just giving it a... I was just giving an exaggerated example. Uh, hopefully you won't be following no shake who's eating chitlins. But I'm just giving an exaggerated, obvious example of that. So we got to let's finish this section and close out. The second is pretension and affectation and obedience of Allah. In other words, showing off. In other words, showing off, showing off your worship. The third is greediness after the creation of Allah. In other words, love of this world. And so, and so, you know, you find some people, you know, who claim to have, you know, a, a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they're greedy. They love this dunya. The fourth is causing division amongst the people of Allah. If your sheikh brings about division, he's no sheikh. Because this deen is about unity. And you find a lot, lot of so-called sheikhs that's, that's extremely divisive. They come in and you were, you were united before the sheikh came. And the sheikh came and now y'all hate each other. Y'all make it talk fair on each other and kicking each other out outside of Islam. Just because he's not part of your tariqa. The fifth is failing to show respect for Muslims as Allah has commanded. And which makes Islam complete. And a lot of things... And, 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 and this is the case with a lot of so-called sheikhs. They're very disrespectful to the Muslims. They're very condescending. And they don't, they don't know, they, they forgot that basic Islam is protecting the honor of a Muslim. And so uh, a lot of these uh, fake sheikhs, they feel like they got to put you down in order to bring themselves up. This is one of the signs that this person ain't really no sheikh. Uh, alhamdulillah, I'm not going to take any comments or questions because Margaret is in and I need to uh, make wudu and get ready. So inshallah, we pray that this was beneficial. If you were looking for us to mention names, you came to the wrong place. We were just giving you some pr uh, principles. If you follow these principles that the sheikh, that the sheikh has laid down, if the shoe fits, wear it. If it don't fit, don't wear it. Alhamdulillah, he rabbi lana me. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika nashadu wa la ilaha ila anta wa astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk wa la asra inna al insana la fi khusra inna al ladhina amanu wa aminu salihati wa tawasaw bin haqi wa tawasaw bin sabra. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.